Welcome back to Soch 240 Self and Society. Let's take a look at today's agenda. Okay, the agenda for today. We're gonna to do some quick course housekeeping. I need to let everyone know that my office hours are changing from um, traditional office hours as underscored in the syllabus to appointment only. I'll tell you why in a second. I wanna make sure that everyone has access to the textbook. And of course, today's lecture, lecture three, is all about William James and the Pragmatic Turk. Course housekeeping. Only five students have submitted their course blog one, two, or three in Canvas. If you have not done so, please submit your course blog one, two, or three in Canvas. Otherwise, you will receive a zero, and that's not good for anyone. How's it going with the textbook? Please reach out to me if you have any issues accessing a copy of our textbook. It's vitally important. We're, by the end of this week, a pretty good chunk through it, so I need to know if there's any issues with accessing the textbook. Office hours, changing. Um, okay, so I'm doing this primarily so that those of you who are working a job or two or have families have better access to me. I'm canceling my traditional office hours as outlined in the syllabus and I'm going appointment only. Now, in doing so, I'm opening up my schedule. Um, if, if you can only meet in the early mornings, let's say 8, 9, 10, 7 a.m. even, please let me know and we'll work something out. If you can only meet in the evenings, 8, 9, or even 9.30, 9.45-ish, please reach out to me and we'll get something worked out. I'm doing this to open up my schedule for those students who need to meet with me but can't because of their, you know, um, their own private schedules. So again, my office hours are changing, appointment only. Please reach out if you need to discuss anything with me and we'll get something on the books. Via email, email me. Don't email me through Canvas. It takes me longer to answer those. Email me at my DU email account. Okay, William James in The Pragmatic Turn. Let's get into it. Let's talk about the pragmatist view for just a couple of minutes. The pragmatist view does not simply mean practical as it does in everyday vocabulary. And it most definitely doesn't mean if something works, it's true. Pragmatism refers to the belief that what we call reality is not some mysterious quality that exists outside of the everyday world. The everyday world is indeed accessible to us and our senses. In the pragmatist view, we create reality as we go about the matters of ordinary living. In James's now published lectures titled, What is Pragmatism? James gives us the now famous, does man go around a squirrel or not, thought experiment. Now, bear with me as I read it. It's a bit long, but just hear it out, hear it out. And I quote, Some years ago, being with a camping party in the mountains, I returned from a solitary ramble to find everyone engaged in a ferocious metaphysical dispute. The corpus of the dispute was a squirrel, a live squirrel, supposed to be clinging to one side of a tree trunk, while over against the tree's opposite side, a human was being imagined to stand. This human witness tries to get sight of the squirrel by moving rapidly around the tree. But no matter how fast he goes, the squirrel moves as fast in the opposite direction and always keeps the tree between himself and the man so that never a glimpse of him is caught. The resultant metaphysical problem now is this. Does the man go around the squirrel or not? He goes around the tree, sure enough, and the squirrel is on the tree. But does he go around the squirrel? In the unlimited leisure of the wilderness, discussion had been worn threadbare. Everyone had taken sides and was abstinent. And the numbers on both sides were even. Each side, when I appeared, therefore appealed to me to make it a majority. Mindful of the scholastic adage that whenever you meet a contradiction, you must make a distinction, I immediately sought and found one as follows. Which party is right, I said, depends on what you practically mean by going around the squirrel. If you mean passing from the north of him to the east, then to the south, 
then to the west, and then to the north of him, obviously the man does go around him, for he occupies these successive positions. But if on the contrary, you mean being first in front of him, then on the right of him, then behind him, then on his left, and then finally in front again, it is quite as obvious that the man fails to go around him. For by the compensating movements the squirrel makes, he keeps his belly turned towards the man at all time, and his back turned away. Make the distinction, and there is no occasion for any further dispute. You are both right and both wrong, according as you conceive the verb to go round, in one practical fashion or the other. Now, Pragmatism is first and foremost a method. James uses this story to frame and explain pragmatism as a method, a method for settling metaphysical disputes of a certain kind. For example, self. James makes clear what pragmatism is. First and foremost, it's a method. Quote, the pragmatic method is primarily a method of settling metaphysical disputes that otherwise might be interminable. The pragmatic method in such cases is to try and interpret each notion by tracing its respective practical consequences. What difference would it practically make to anyone if this notion rather than that notion were true? If no practical difference, whatever can be traced, then the alternatives mean practically the same thing and all dispute is idle. The pragmatist position on self considered transcendentalist, British empiricists, and Freudian disputes of self interminable, endless. The position argues, what difference would it practically make to anyone if this notion rather than that notion were true? If soul, substance, self, consciousness, consciousness as self, or self as a habit of the mind were true, what difference would it make? What practical difference would it make? If no practical difference whatever can be traced, then the alternatives mean practically the same thing and all dispute is idle. In everyday life, the self is an aspect of communication, either the inner practice of self-awareness in thought or the subjectivism evident in open references to personal characteristics. Let's work through this. The self is a communication process we use to refer to ourselves to others in the world. It doesn't exist separate or over and above communication. For James, the self is always going to begin with people, people in their social worlds surrounded by other people living in their social worlds. And together, they are constantly involved in the concrete and empirical affairs of daily living. The concrete and empirical affairs of daily living. This is central to the pragmatic view of self. The self is intimately linked to the concrete and empirical affairs of daily living. James' view on self is deeply tied to his functionalist view on psychology. The Jamesian account of functional psychology is framed in a common sense position, which is very basically summarized in the form of a question. How do mental activities help an organism, help a being, help a human being fit its environment? Put another way, what is the mind for? What is consciousness for? What is gained by having a mind? What is gained by having a self? In answering this question, James perhaps becomes, as Daniel Robinson underscores, the first quasi-neuroscientist. You see, James believed that beings or creatures of nature are created to deal with the environment as commonly found. 
we deal with nature as we find it. Now the brain is an immensely complicated organ made up of billions of cells, and it's constantly calculating, analyzing, categorizing. A constant and incalculable amount of varying stimuli introduced by the environment. Left unregulated, the brain would be picking up everything nature has to offer all at once. The mind, consciousness, as James argues, has one main function, to regulate neuroactivity itself. The mind, consciousness, is to regulate a system that would otherwise go haywire without it. Remember, the self for James is always going to begin with people in their social worlds, surrounded by other people living in their social worlds, and together they are constantly involved in the concrete and empirical affairs of daily living. According to James, functional psychology, human beings are created to deal with the environment as commonly found. What is that environment? Social life. The mind has one function, to regulate the mental activity itself. Without this regulation, the mind would go haywire. The self is a communication system used by our mind to help us deal with our environment, a social world filled with 7.8 billion other selves. Can you imagine if, if we had no idea of self? How would we ever do anything? What does this inward communication system look like? James calls it the I and the me. Here is how we view what James calls the empirical self. The source of our thinking is called the I, and the object of our thought is called the me. James uses pragmatism as a method in advancing his concept of self, which became highly influential in sociology. He forwarded a two-part self, one that has experiences and one that reflects on those experiences. Now, these are not separate parts of the self, but rather dimensions of the self. What does your text say? And I quote, when we think about ourselves, there is a source of that thinking, which James called the I, and the object of our thinking, which James called the me. James argued for a self rooted in everyday experiences, a self deeply influenced by and shaped by ordinary social life. James is focused on the self experienced in everyday life, and the self of everyday life has a daily awareness that is formed in reflection upon itself. Awareness senses a source, the I, and an object of that awareness is the me, the I and the me. James argued for a socially manifold self. On this, he writes, and I quote, Properly speaking, a man has as many social selves as there are individuals who recognize him and carry an image of him in their mind. For the pragmatists, references to the self are more of a manner of speaking rather than representations of being. James, Cooley, and Mead referred to the self in the plural, as, it, as, it's, as it's referring to in this quote, in the plural, because they were focused on an empirical self, a self in an operative sense, meaning not only who we are to ourself, but also, perhaps more importantly, who we are to others. Again, in everyday life, the self is an aspect of communication, either the inner practice of self-awareness and thought, or the subjectivism, evident in open references to personal characteristics. Let's break this down a bit. The inner practice of self-awareness in thought. The I is aware of its own actions. It has a sense of agency, of free will, and it is the initiator of behavior. It also has a sense of continuity, and, and, and a sense of awareness. 
the subjectivism evident in open references to personal characteristics, right? I'm, I'm, I'm taking this from here, right? The subjectivism evident in open reference to personal characteristics, the me. The me is the object self or the self you can describe with references to personal characteristics. Now, James breaks down the me across three dimensions. There's the material me, the object with physical appearance, the physical me, the beard, the glasses, the hat, the shirt. There's the social me, which is what sociology and, and sociological social, social psychology take up most. The social me, the social me is formed through social interaction. The social me gives rise to the social self and is grown and altered within the daily affairs of ordinary life. And changes in relationships with the daily affairs of life result in, remember what James says, a man having as many social selves as there are individuals who recognize him and that carry an image of him in their minds. The social self, the social me is not fixed. And then there's the spiritual me, which is um, where James perhaps might get a little quirky and he defines the, the spiritual me uh, as what houses character and, and defining values. Well, how does this all play out in language and communication? I'm going to read off a sentence and then we're going to evaluate it according to James's account of the I and the me. Now, I could say something like, I think I'm going to teach a self and society course at DU this semester. Okay, that's, that's the I, right? That's the I. The I that is aware of its own actions, that has a sense of agency, and is the initiator of behavior. It has a sense of continuity and, 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 and has a deep awareness. I have my agency. I have decided I'm going to teach this class. Let's take a look at another sentence. I could say something like, my parents want me to take a self and society course. They think it will help my attitude. Here we have an example of the me. Is the me as the object, the object self, or the self you can describe with reference to personal characteristics. My parents want me to take a self in society. They think it'll help my attitude, right? The personal characteristic is my attitude. The me is the object. So I'm talking to a friend perhaps, and I'm saying my parents want me to take a self and society course. They think it'll help my attitude. Here we're talking about the me. And it is the I who is explaining that me. And the I and the me are this dynamic function of the self according to William James. Okay, so that's a quick summary on how William James used American pragmatism to develop and argue for his version, his concept, his theory of the self. Okay, let's take a look at some midterm questions and review some of the concepts that we've been talking about over the last few lectures. This question will appear on your midterm exam. According to Rene Descartes, where is the self located? I said this probably 10 times already. It's located in pages one through six, and it is the source of thought or thinking. The self is located in the source of thought or thinking. Another question that's going to appear on your midterm is Descartes' image of the self is known as. You can find the answer to this question on page six. What is pragmatism turning away from the blank self? Starts with a T, super simple. Another question you're going to see on your midterm exam is we refer to William James, George, excuse me, we refer to William James, Charles Horton Cooley, and George Herbert Mead as pragmatist thinkers because 
You can find the answer to this question on pages six through 22. It's a general comprehension type of question. And I just spent the whole lecture outlining this. Another question that's going to appear in your midterm uh, on this topic is, according to William James, awareness involves a source, an object of which we are aware. Which of the following terms best illustrates James's framework? Now, these are multiple choice questions, so they might be weird as I present them here, but we literally just talked about this. According to William James, awareness involves a source and an object, a source and an object of which we are aware. Which of the following terms best illustrates James's framework? I just lectured on this. Using personal pronouns, James explains the awareness senses a source, the blank, and an object, the blank. Um, and then here we have one, two, three, four, five. Do I have five here? Yeah, okay, fifth question. Um, this question will appear in your midterm as well. In the course text, Holstein and, I can never pronounce this name, Gubrium, claim that one of William James's significant advances was the removal of the concept of self from the purely metaphysical realm to the view of at least some aspect of it as derived from interaction processes in the social environment. What image or model of the self is associated with James? You can find the answer to this question on pages 10 through 13. I also just lectured on this. I'll give you a hint. It is the slide title of my last slide. If one of you emails me the correct answer to this question, I will give you one point of extra credit towards your final grade. I'll read it again. In the course text, Holstein and Gubrium, Gubrium claim that one of William James's significant advances was the removal of the concept of self from the purely metaphysical realm to the view of at least some aspect of it as derived from interaction processes in the social environment. What image or model of the self is associated with James? The self is what to James? The self can be found in what to James? It's not transcendental, it's what? One word. Okay, with that, that wraps up our lecture on William James and American pragmatism, the I and the me. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to email me. We can totally meet and talk about this content. If you know the answer to this last question, please email me. You can answer this using one word um, and um, you will get extra credit um, towards your final exam. Oh, I should underscore the first person. So only one person can get extra credit for this. The first person to email me the correct answer, please feel free to email me. And if it's correct, you will have one full point towards your final grade. Lastly, if you have questions about these midterm questions, please schedule an appointment with me. If it looks weird here, you know, these are multiple choice questions. So they're gonna look a little wonky, right? Because you don't have the multiple choice options. But if you wanna set up an appointment with me and be like, you know, ask me a question about, okay, you know, what, what's happening with Rene Descartes? Where is the self located? Where is this reading material? Or where exactly is this happening in the text, even though I already told you, please feel free to set up an appointment so that we can talk and go through these questions. We will arrive at the correct answers together. Uh, I'm totally here to do that. Okay, with that said, that is the conclusion of our lecture for today, our video lecture for today. Please email me if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. Have a good day. See you later.